Next we have Rising Creek. Fly through eight rings out of 15, then land on the landing point. You must fly through eight rings to receive the time points. Okay, so I really don't have a route for this. I mean, I do, but like, I don't know if it's a good route or not. But basically all you have to do is fly through eight rings. First, I would recommend you get these three rings that kind of, you know, go along this little creek right here, just because, you know, they kind of encourage you to go this way anyway, so you might as well pick them up while you can. And, oh damn it, I missed that one. Oh damn it, I'm gonna crash, okay, no, I'm not. I thought I was gonna crash right there. Okay, I'll ignore that ring and try to get some other rings then. I'm not sure what you need for time points, I probably should have checked that out. But I can't imagine the time ring or the time points being that beneficial for this mission. I probably should be making that assumption though. Okay, so then I recommend going for this ring over here. Mainly because there's a ring right after it on the ground, so you can kind of hit this one and then hit the next one. And then it's just a matter of, you know, going into the middle area and getting whatever rings you can there. And then you just, you know, fly to the target. Okay, so fly through there. Then I'll fly through this one. And remember, rings that are yellow on the radar are rings that are above you. And rings that are green are below you. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. Okay, that ring over there, that's going to be the last ring I hit, so I'm going to ignore that ring for right now. I probably should have got the ring down there. Oh well. I'll get this one, I guess. Maybe that one. Like, can I even get this one or am I too low? Come on, get it, get it. Oh, come on, I missed it. What was that noise I was making? It was all like... Dur -ba -dur -ba -dur -ba. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> okay, let me get into this air current and actually take a look at the situation here. Ah, oh, man. I could have done this mission a lot better. But nope, I had to be stupid and I had to screw this up so badly. Okay, there's a ring right there. I think I have three left. Three to go. It doesn't seem like I have three to go. It feels like I should have, you know, a little more than that, but I did screw that one up pretty badly. Okay, so I'll get this one next. And then maybe I'll just, you know, get the one behind me and then kind of ease my way around and get that last ring and then go for the landing. I will definitely not have perfect time points, but yeah, I figured I wouldn't from the beginning, actually. Actually, I'd be good to go if I actually got that one ring the first time. Okay, I need to turn around. Can't exactly see where I'm going right here. I probably should have used Kiwi, because I think Kiwi has just a little more maneuverability than Lark does. I don't know that for a fact, though. Again, they're pretty secretive about the stats of all the characters. You kind of have to figure them out for yourself. Okay, so I'll get this one, and I won't screw this one up this time. Now let's hurry up and speed up to this last ring that's over here. Or wait, I guess I could have just got this one. Oh wait, no, this was the one I missed before. Okay, so yeah, I'll go for the target now. Oh yeah, very bad time points. I might have to redo this one. But I'm not going to worry about that just yet. I'm actually not sure what the time limit is. Okay. Right here, after this little incline, you do have to kind of speed up and slow down at the same time. Because you don't want to hit this target too fast. So I'll slow down a little bit. Get level with the target. Maybe slow down a little bit again. Let's actually land now. Hey, 
Hey, at least I actually did it before five minutes, though. And that's actually a pretty good score, considering. That is a pretty good score. I did lose seven time points and one landing impact point, but that's pretty good. Okay, let's do what I think is the hardest mission in the entire game, not counting the extra games. Take photos of Missy the Monster, the passenger boat, and the space shuttle. Then land on the landing point. So yeah, so you have to get pictures of three things. Each thing is worth 20 points. And you don't have very many pictures, so you basically have to spend two pictures on each thing. And then of course you have the landing. Thankfully there are no time points. But there is something that, that is kind of timed in this mission. And I'll talk about that later when we actually get to it. Uh, first thing we're going to take a picture of is Missy the Monster. This is actually the easiest thing to get a photo of, believe it or not. Basically, Missy the Monster is located in this little dam area. You'll see her head pop out here in a second. Yep, there she is. Rawr! It's a monster! It's Lapras! No, it's not. No, it's a shiny Lapras. Actually, are shiny Lapras is red, or is that Gyarados? Oh well, I don't know for sure. I'm not a big shiny expert when it comes to Pokemon. Okay, so I took one picture of Missy. That picture is usually pretty easy to get, so I don't try to spend too many photos of it. Okay, I know the uh, passenger boat is actually to the left of where I'm going, but I'm actually going over here to get some more air before I actually go to it. Uh, the hardest thing to get a picture of is probably the space shuttle. Because the space shuttle actually takes off. So what you have to do is you have to really increase your speed if you want to get a picture of it in time. I've always had a problem with getting it, but I found a pretty good strategy to use, so... If you want to use my strategy, you can. Don't worry, you don't need to use copyright infringement or anything. Okay, so the boat is actually probably the hardest thing. I don't know. It's either the boat or the space shuttle. The space shuttle for the time reason, the boat for just like, you know, actually getting a good photo of it. The boat doesn't really cooperate very well. Okay, so... I guess that's pretty good. Okay, now I have to make my way over to this geyser before I take a dip in the ocean. And as you can see, the space shuttle's over there. Now, what you're going to want to do for this, it's actually kind of weird, but it's the method I use, and it actually works pretty well, so you might want to actually take this as a strategy tip. But you're going to want to go over here, this way, towards this geyser. This way, you can get enough air, so you can actually make a downward descend to the space shuttle and get a speedy pictograph before it actually takes off. That's basically what I do here. And try to keep the space shuttle out of view, because I think the longer it stays out of view, um, the later it will take off. I really don't know the mechanics of it very well, but it's something like that. Okay, so yeah, take advantage of this thermal current and turn your attention over to the space shuttle and hurry up and speed up right here and then get yourself level with it and then quickly take a few photos of it okay that was actually pretty good now let us actually make the landing that is the last thing to worry about. I mean, it's one thing to spend four minutes taking pictures, but it's another thing to spend four minutes taking pictures and then screwing up the landing really badly. Okay, so let's slow down a little bit. This is not going to be perfect, I'm aware of that, because I'm lined up very weirdly, but at least I can give it my best effort. Okay, come on, I can do this, I can do this. A little higher, a little higher. B button. 
Okay, that should do it. That should actually be pretty good. 87! That's perfect. That's actually going to work out really well. Uh, because the 100 I got in the uh, first mission will actually, you know, make that a gold medal. So, hooray for a perfect score. Or, hooray for a gold medal, not a perfect score. That would be incredible if I actually got a perfect score on that. Highly unlikely, but incredible. Okay, so I'm actually going to take a little break right now. Um, if this is the end of the video, I'll see you guys next time. But if this is in the middle of the video, I'll see you guys in a few seconds. So, uh, later guys. Okay guys, I am back for more Let's Play Pilot Wing 64. Let's get started with the Rocket Belt Pilot class. Um, I'll go ahead and just use Hawk again, just because. Okay, the first test we have is Dark Cavern. Fly through the ca cavern as quickly as possible, then fly through the goal ring at the end. Don't crash into the cavern wall. So, the scoring for this mission is basically just time points. So if you finish this mission by two minutes, you get a perfect score. Now, it's really easy to lose points in this mission, though, because um, it's fairly easy to crash into the wall. And if you crash into a wall, you'll obviously get two point deductions, so you have to be very careful with how you do this. And you're going to want to use your hover as much as possible so you don't run into the walls. It can be difficult, and you might have some trouble with it, but, you know, Steady will win you this mission. If it was a race, you'd probably not win. You'd probably lose to a very, very good speedrunner. Oh, damn it. Oh well, no big deal. But yeah, just be steady in this mission. Um, the two minute time limit really isn't that hard to meet. It really isn't. I'm about halfway through right now. And I haven't even wasted half of my time yet, so... I almost died right there. That was close. Wow, okay. So yeah, just be very careful and you should be fine. Right here, watch out for the stalactites and stalagmites, since both kinds are actually in here. And then you gotta fall through this little hole right here. Now a bunch of people are going to make a joke about falling through the hole. Because some of my viewers can be eh, kind of immature about that, but I'm a pretty immature guy myself, so I won't hold them to that or anything. Aw, oh, damn it. I couldn't see where I was going. Okay. Okay, let's be careful. We're almost done here. I believe the ending is right up here, actually. A 96 is still a really good score, so I'm not going to cry about my point deductions too much. And as you can see, the goal ring has started to appear on the radar, and there it is. Kind of a fun fact for you guys, um, there's only one mission in this class where you actually have to land on the target, and it's the next one. Because the last mission is another one of those uh, giant green ball missions, so... Yeah, you don't deal with, uh, well, you only deal with one target mission in this entire class. 